Aloha. Good afternoon. It's Wednesday. It's 11 o'clock. It's June the 16th, 2021. That can mean only one thing. What now, America? I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. And today's title is UFO, the truth embargo is over. Um, believe it or not, in the next couple of weeks, the Secretary of Defense and the Director of National Security is going to issue a report that is due out and it will be unclassified. It won't be a classified report. And that report is going to be su uh, submitted to the committees of uh, armed services, the armed services committees in, uh, in Congress. They're going to get that report. And basically what it's going to say is these observations that have been documented by Navy uh, fighter pilots. And uh, these, these identified objects, we used to call them UFOs, uh, but now they're called unidentified unidentified aerial phenomena. So UAP is a new acronym. And um, before we go any further on UAPs or UFOs, uh, you know, we can observe the technology. We can take a look for ourselves on the, the video footage. Uh, 60 Minutes had a, a nice program on this about three weeks ago. And you can look at the footage and you don't have to correlate any kind of uh, phenomena, uh, UFO or unidentified aerial phenomena with a little green man from the planet Kolak. You don't have to, it's not a binary choice. So the good news is we can observe this, discuss it. It'll be on the news front here in a couple of weeks, most likely. And we're gonna have to probably discuss it because it's a security issue for the United States. And, uh, and let me just go to what President Obama said recently. And he said the following, what is true, and I'm actually being serious here, is that there are, there's footage and records of objects in the sky. We don't know exactly what they are. We can't explain how they move, their, tra their tra trajectory. They did not have an easily explainable pattern. And so, you know, I think people still are taking seriously and investigating and trying to figure what that is. So that's President Obama. And then uh, we have Harry Reid, which we'll talk about in a minute, just as soon as I introduce our guests. So with me today is Jay Fidel, Stephanie Dalton, and Winston Welch. A good, every, a good afternoon or good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to What Now America. Uh -huh. Aloha. Hey, Tim. So Jay, before I ask you a question, um, let, me, let me point out something Harry Reid, Reid, our former Speaker of the House, he was Speaker of the House at the time. In 2007, he dedicated 22 million to a secret program called the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. And uh, basically it was identify these things in the sky that no one can seem to identify what they are and certainly the technology involved on the trajectory and how they move. So what Harry Reid said recently was, I'm glad the Pentagon is finally releasing the footage, but it only scratches the surface of research and materials available. The US needs to take this seriously and take a scientific look at this as any potential national security implications. The American people deserve to be informed. So with that in mind, Jay, uh, we have President Obama and Harry Reid basically saying there is a security threat or potential security threat. And uh, we are going to submit a report and it's gonna discuss UFOs. Why now? Why, why after 75 years do you think our government, which has denied all, all, all UFOs for 75 years, why now all of a sudden? Slow news day. Slow news day. Yeah, <clears throat> um, this is really, uh, <laughs> how, how do I say? I, I just don't put any stock at all in this, zero. Um, you know, if, if any pilot saw it up close, that might change my view, but they didn't. They saw it at a distance and, the, the, you know, let the scientists figure out um, what the explanations might be. But meanwhile, it hasn't touched us. We, it hasn't done anything. It hasn't been a threat. Um, you know, it goes on a list of things that maybe somebody in the back office, some scientist in the back office of DOD or NASA should be studying. It does not go at the top of the news heap. The news heap is the undermining and the destruction of our democracy. This is no more, no less than a distraction. Let us not distract ourselves. Well, that's the topic of today. So we are going to distract ourselves for a bit. Um, you know, what's going to come out of this report, and I think the, uh, 
the Washington Post has already got a glimpse of it, and it's going to say basically three things. Number one, they can confirm that the United States does not have this technology. That's one. Two, they don't think or they don't know if China or Russia has this technology. But if they do, uh, that would put us severely at a disadvantage. I'm going to remind everybody to October uh, 1957, when Russia uh, sent up a satellite called Sputnik, and it sent the United States of population in a panic, because now Russia had a technology that no one else had. And not only did they not have the technology, it was circling the orbit around the United, past the United States. So um, basically what I'm saying is, if this technology exists, uh, and the United States is going to confirm they don't have it, does that put us back into the days of 1957, where we better figure out what it is and get it ourselves? Um, your thoughts? Well, um, if this had some indication of being um, relevant <clears throat> to national security or to technology as might be used for national security, um, that is one thing. But you know, I think that just as likely it could be an atmospheric phenomenon. I, I do not think it comes from the planet Kovac. Kovac, you meant you named the planet a little while ago. I, I didn't mean I think I did. I said Kolak, but that's Kolak. all right. I, Kolak, just pulled that out of, I, I pulled that out of the thin air like, like everything else I do. Well, my wife and I do not sit at the <laughs> breakfast tables talking much about Kolak. Uh, <clears throat> remember, bon I said in order to discuss this topic, we need not go to planet Kolak to discuss it. We're talking about a technology that is probably most likely a national security threat or an issue. And remember, this is the military that waited five hours before releasing the National Guard. This is the military that has okay. uh, Mike Flynn, um, Mike Flynn's brother, at the, um, at the at the core of national security decisions, and we haven't really gotten to the bottom of it. This is this is a military who is resisting, uh, you know, commissions. This is a military. Um, where individuals from the military participated or supported the um, January 16th insurrection. So, you know, I, I just, um, I, I come back to the same point. If, if, if they could explain to us why this is relevant, why it's really a technology rather than a weather phenomenon, um, like a rainbow, you know, uh, you, you can't get to the end of it. You never actually can touch it, can you? And it doesn't do anything to you. It could be, um, you know, re, uh, refracting light. Who knows? But it's certainly not something that has immediate relevance to us. Um, and I don't think it's going to be. You know, if they if they saw this stuff in 1946, you think they had that technology then? I don't think so. I mean, if there was really a question of technology, some nefarious technology by Russia or by China, um, when did they have it in 1946? Um, sounds to me like this is all a distraction, sorry. Um, and I mean, we can speculate about it, but there's nothing, no hard evidence of anything. And uh, it sounds to me like it's political or, or worse. Uh, all right, so I'll I'm, go to the, I'm, I go I'm back to the, I go back to the question. Why now? A slow news day. Um, you know, somebody wants to distract us all of a sudden. But, you know, the reality is we're in terrible straits with, what did uh, Rachel uh, Maddow call it? Just a five alarm fire on voting rights. And, and we have all these people going to Washington and trying to explain to Republican senators they should vote for voting rights. You know, I'm, I'm here to tell you, and maybe it's because of the infrared or ultraviolet rays coming, coming out of these UFO things um, that is affecting our judgment, you know? But so the Senate, especially, um, we're not gonna get a voting rights bill. And, um, you know, I think people have got to focus on what happens now. And, uh, and that includes Merritt Garland. He's got to focus on what happens now. And so, um, you know, I'm not sure that the uh, meeting with Putin may, made any difference. I doubt that Russia has this kind of technology. I mean, I'm not even sure what kind of te technology we're talking about. Why now? Um, the media will pick up anything that it feels will interest the public, anything. And, and it's giving us a break from the normal, the normal ebb and flow of political news. And, well, it's not and the media. we it's, should probably appreciate that. It, you know, the Pentagon released this. I mean, a 60 Minutes interview, you had a very lengthy discussion with the two Navy pilots 
that observed these directly. I saw that. And, and I was, and, and I was and impressed. Did they seem credible to you? They seemed credible to me. They did. They did. But it doesn't matter because they maybe were credible, maybe not credible. Um, I, I don't think we can afford to, to, to deal with this. Um, and, I, and I think that um, even if they're credible, it's not for us to make scientific decisions. We don't know enough. And, and what's happening is the media is exciting everybody and the military is exciting everybody. And DOT is going whirly bird over this. But, but the reality is we don't know anything. So we're going to get, you know, 330 million people all wound up in UFOs now. Uh, that has got to be the last thing on the plate. All right. Thank you, Jay. I knew I could count on you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Stephanie, this isn't the first time the Pentagon has had to deal with a, a producing a report. Now, this report, by the way, I think came at the direction of Marco Rubio. Uh, or at least he's one that's going to be one of the key recipients of this Pentagon report. But this this actually was attached to a COVID funding bill. And I don't know if it was one of those uh, coat hangers that was put on at the last minute. But be as it may, it, it was the funding for this, this research and this report, it was coming out of one of the COVID um, expenditures. So, but like I said, back in 1952, there was something called Project Blue Book. And from 1952 to 1969, there was a cabal, if you will, of selected people in the government that it was their sole mission to investigate the phenomena of UFOs and report on it. And after all those years, over 12,000 uh, eyewitnesses and, and reports, over 12,100 or so, um, there were all, as Jay would say, all explained away, except for 710 of them. There was no explanation whatsoever of what, what they were and how they were. Put that aside. So when they come out with this report in two weeks, what if, what if the report says, we believe China or Russia, or both have this technology, and therefore the United States doesn't. Does that shift the, the balance of power uh, from a military sense? And does that put us into a spending race, a space race, if you will, back in those early 60s where we were spending a lot of money uh, trying to catch up with the Russians? And uh, as you know, the space race is history. Uh, we had a lot of successes and we had some failures, but we spent a whole lot of money doing it. Does that put us not into a, a, an expenditure race as we did back in the late 50s, early 60s? Well, you know, I think uh, that uh, I understand from the experts that have reported on TV that I've seen them on programs that, like Jay says, it's atmospheric or it's um, optical illusion. It's that sort of thing that, that is probably occurring. Um, so far, they've been non-threatening. The Navy pilots were still very far away. I didn't see any of these guys like taking off straight for it. Let's find out what this is. So um, until they do that and get some hard evidence, um, I think we still have to leave it in that realm of uh, very, very uh, un unexplainable. And uh, as they've always uh, said with these things, however, on the, on, on the side. Just to add this, just to remind everyone that more than 70 million people in this country think that Trump is still the president and he's been the best president the country has ever had. Okay, just, going I with just that want point. to remind everybody. Let me, yeah, perfect, Jay. I want to go with that point because what if uh, this report says the technology exists, but we don't know who, we don't know who has it, but it exists. Does that give the opportunity for QAnon and the wackos associated with QAnon or, or some new group uh, the opportunity to take this to the next level. Well, I was going to say that was my next point because your question, that was your question originally. And it's just like uh, when we saw with, with COVID, uh, the COVID uh, vaccine, it's not like when Trump said, oh, let's get a vaccine that, the, that that's the first time the scientists picked up the test too. I mean, this was already ongoing part of the process of science and investigation into viruses. So we there was already a huge shift, a trend to get in, into this new way of, of addressing an attack of a virus like COVID-19. So well, I think with, with the UFOs, if it turns out that, that is, it is real, somebody is doing this, the Finns or but 
Chazakistan or somebody's got this new way of thinking about things that can make them do ma ma magic things. I believe it'll be like the men in black. We've already got somebody working on this. It won't be to that extent or that well developed or having, you know, co colonies of tourists, you know, from other planets hidden underground. But there's already somebody, I'm sure that we have got a lot of advanced work, you know, like on the, the, the plane that's under the radar and, you know, all, all of those technologies, uh, you know, were undercover for a very long time. So uh, I, I don't think we'd be starting from scratch or anything if it turned out to be real. Then yes, I think whoever's doing this fast forward scientific effort of the big brains and the scientifically knowledgeable guys are out there building some things that they would fund that and we would get something going. So yes, I think there'd be a lot of money going into whatever that secret project is or that special project. That Yeah, uh, we, we could find out that this is actually emanating from Kazakhstan. And it's a bunch of clever Kazakhstanis uh, who have found clever ways to manipulate yak meat into <laughs> exactly Some, or that how you know, yaks. You know, Jay, I'm taking a I'm taking a wild subject and trying to make it serious, and you're just not helping right now. Okay. <laughs> But I mean, I'm sure we're I'm, whatever I may not be in Area 57, but there definitely is money and our money, tax money. And I think we want it in an advanced, a very advanced study of how to improve our technology by leaps. Is this more or less important than the voting bill? We're going to get to these things as soon as I get done with with my question to Winston, Jay, if you allow me, Sorry. we're going to get to this very thing. <laughs> <laughs> Winston, I know you'll take this a little more seriously than Mr. Fidel, and that is, we've already, you know, Harry Reid spent $22 million of taxpayer dollars back in 2007 to fund this, this effort, to find out what, these, what these, this phenomena is up in the sky. And apparently, I don't know how much out of the COVID bill was spent on this, but it is taking some resources, and it's going to be reported in the next two weeks. Um, where do we go from here? Is this... Are we get, I'll ask this, the same question to you as I asked Stephanie. Would this put the United States in a new spending race because we don't have the, the technology? Now, they're going to confirm the United States does not have this, this secret aerial technology that's been witnessed by, by not only these two pilots, but several other pilots before. Um, do we get ourselves into um, a twist and start spending money hand over fist trying to figure out what it is and how to get it? Well, it just I go to Jay's sense. point. I go to Jay's point. There's a lot of other things that we need to deal with. There are a lot of other things that we need to deal with. I agree. It's probably a slow news day, but uh, Mr. Fidel just said that he does not believe there's a leprechaun at the other end of the rainbow with a pot of gold. So I think we really need to question pretty much everything that comes out of his mouth at this point. So um, for those of us that do believe in the leprechaun at the end of the rainbow with a pot of gold. I would just state that, um, you know, it does get right back to the slow news day, voting act rights, all of that, because what it comes down to is when Gallup surveys people and it says whether they believe in UFOs or not, a majority of Americans uh, in a Gallup poll in 19, uh, 2019 said 68 percent felt the government was withholding information. Uh, that was down slightly from 71% in 1996. So if, what it's pointing is, is like a, a third of people believe uh, basically in, in US, uh, UFOs in this, that, that have landed here. Um, and this is true for men, women, old, young, Catholics, Protestants, um, uh, independents, Republicans, Democrats, independents actually believe it a little bit more. People in the West believe it a little bit more than the people in the East. Um, but I think what we're what we're seeing here is that, uh, you know, and then and half half of Americans think that uh, people like ourselves exist somewhere else in the universe. Seventy five percent believe some other form of life exists. So what I think that there's this feeling is, is it goes back to an essential distrust of government. Are they really doing the right things? Are they lying to us? Are they lying to us? Well, there's another a poll that I was reading about why do Americans and Forbes believe in conspiracy theories. One in five younger Americans has heard 
that uh, there were being implanted with microchips from uh, the uh, with the vaccine versus one in ten older folks. So it's getting worse. It's not getting better. Um, you know, the number of people who say that Bill Gates is, uh, you know, done, uh, that his foundations are are good. Um, younger Americans, only one in three agree with that statement, whereas um, uh, over 60, uh, half of the people agree with that statement that his foundation has done good um, in fighting hunger and poverty. So we're seeing actually a trend towards more um, acceptance of uh, I, I won't even call them fringe ideas, just ideas that say whatever the government is saying or what it, these these institutions that we trust and believe in um, are 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 suspect. And uh, whether it's, it's a foundation like Bill Gates or whether it's your congressman. And then you have folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who doesn't help with the Jewish space uh, lasers, lasers, you know, coming yep. in. So, you know, we have so many um, ideas out there. There's more people that believe in QAnon than our Episcopalians in this country. And so I think that, you know, we've got some serious um, issues here about credibility and who to believe, when to believe, why to believe, what to believe. Um, you know, of course, the real news is right here on Think Tech and Mr. Fidel, to his credit. I'm going to I'm just going to leave my mind open to the idea of no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. I'm holding out hope um, if the aliens are here, you know, and and we've had as humans, we're fast. Aliens are here. If they come here, if they visit with us, maybe even take us over. I sure hope they give us a voting rights bill. Well, that That's may correct. be. But you got to think about like, OK, so if the aliens were here to destroy us and they were just here for our resources, we wouldn't be here having this conversation right now, most likely. And right. I, and I think that in all fairness. We have had War of the Worlds. Remember when that came out on the radio, Orson Welles, uh, and that freaked out people. Uh, and that was in the 30s, right? And so we have this fascination. We have something inside of our collective unconscious as humans that there are aliens that have um, landed on this planet that maybe were our forebears or whatever. Maybe they left us here to figure it out. I don't know. Look at uh, the space uh, the, the, the space Odyssey movie in the 69 that came out. Um, that starts with the right the 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 the, uh, the, the obelisk giving the, the monkeys uh, the power to make fire or kill each other whatever it is that they did. Uh, you have it again and again and again that this is ingrained in our culture, so it's interesting for us, and it's a right. harmless distraction. At this All right. Point. Well, we distraction or not, distracted. yeah. Distraction or not, the news story of this and it's why I'm reporting on it is for the first time in 75 years, the United States government is acknowledging the existence of this technology. That's the news story. And then we're going to leave it. <laughs> we'll find out more in two weeks or, or three weeks, whenever it, this report not, comes out. They're never going to, they're, they're not going to tell us what they really know. I mean, we all know that. And even if they did, then you'd still have people believing. And if they told us everything, you'd still have the majority of Americans believing that they're still hiding something. So it doesn't matter what they say or don't say at the end of the day. We do need the voting rights bill. That there you go. There you go. Switching gears. Jay, speaking of hiding things, the Trump administration's uh, Department of Justice, lo and behold, was hiding all sorts of things and uh, apparently spying on, on congressmen, Democratic congressmen, one being Adam Schiff and Eric Sawwell. Was, yes. Sawwell. Sawwell, yeah. Um, this is very Nixonian. Yeah, yes, it is. To coin a phrase. Yeah. Well, but, you know, I, I'd like to offer a reaction on that. Is this just like, um, you know, the, the first story on the UFOs? Uh, we, we don't know what we don't know, but we know there's something that we don't know. We know that. Um, and, and I would and I would I would venture to say this is the very, very tippy tip top of the iceberg. And that if he was doing this, God knows what else he was doing. Um, if he had the chutzpah to go after congressmen and take their records, uh, what about you, Tim? What about you, Stephanie? What about you, Winston? You think you were exempt somehow? It would have been so easy for him to have a precy on all of us. Um, and so I, you know, I think I think the real revelation here is is that we 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 knew this in our hearts, didn't we? We always knew this from day one, Tim. Right from the day we started Trump Week. And now we find that our our um, in inclinations were were true, but also it, it it affirms the notion that he was he was doing this on a broad basis, 
And he was, <clears throat> the worst part, of course, is that he was getting the Justice Department to do injustice. I mean, incredible. Do you, do you, do you think that uh, Jeff Sessions, former Attorney General, and Bill Barr, former Attorney General, should be subpoenaed and discuss what they know about this specific uh, invasion of uh, two I, congressmen? I would say absolutely in Lithuanian. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There it is. No, uh, absolutely. This we have to get to the bottom of this, and it's not because we want to chase Trump around, which we do, but we want to find out what happened. We want to find out the depths of it. Uh, we we want to make damn sure that it doesn't happen again. This is a violation of every principle in our government. I mean, you don't you don't have to be a historian to know that. Um, and to find out that he did it just opens the whole issue about where are we these days? Where have we been? How vulnerable are we in the future? This has got to be examined. There should be punishment. There, there should be punishment about all the people who were complicit. And we know some of them, but we don't know a lot of them. And we, we have to take steps to make sure it never happens again. You know, up till now, the public, talk about public perception, has thought only the highest, noblest thoughts about the Department of Justice. After all, it's about justice. It's supposed to do the right thing. You know, it's the, uh, it's the incarnation of, uh, of John F. Kennedy um, and Teddy, not Ke Teddy, but to Robert Kennedy. And so and to find out now that it is rotten, maybe even to the core, uh, and even now being perpetuated under Merrick Garland, who hasn't gotten rid of these people, they have to, one, one left the other day, but they all have to be rooted out. The whole place has to be turned upside down like a flapjack and examined and fixed. We are, uh, Stephanie, we already had one uh, member of the um, attorney general's office resign quickly uh, because I'm sure all fingers will be pointing at that individual. I forget his name right now. But uh, should we expect more in the, aid, um, the Department of Justice to basically flee? because uh, they're gonna get wrapped up in this story. Consequences, I mean, they're gonna do what they're gonna do. And if we don't have some impetus to kick, kick them out, I mean, this is getting back to the Garland issue again and all of the other concerns that Jay raises. I mean, I am desperate over this because that we're just going on here, nothing is happening. These people are able to do these things. The rest of the people that follow them are encouraged to continue. And one, one of the things that has come out in addition to their getting all of that personal information, which is unconstitutional, finally, it's true what I surmise had to be the case, that Trump gives people mortal threats, mortal threats, death threats, children getting killed or hurt threats. And these are being reported by all of the people he approached to change the voting outcomes in the various states. And they are now saying, yes, I'm, I'm a wreck. I'm a wreck. I have to have 24 hours, you know, supervision surveillance around my home. I don't know who's coming after who. And they're saying they're going to hurt my wife. It's outrageous. And why is there nothing happening in a big way? This is good point. Uh, good point. Wisdom, we're running out of time here, but I want to get your opinion on this. You know, this was all about, uh, find out who the leakers were in the Trump administration. And uh, Donald Trump, as you know, was not very pleased about it. And I'm sure any president is not being is not pleased about leaking uh, sensitive information to the press. But that's how this all originated. Uh, where do we go from here? I mean, the Merrick Garland has already is already committed that he's going to abolish uh, this type of activity moving forward. But does it stop? Does it stop there? And will it continue not to, to occur? It's pretty milk toast to me, I, it, you know. He, so he, he's making a nice rule that could be overturned in one second or just ignored. I, I mean, just the fact that these people felt emboldened to do this in the first place speaks volumes about everything. Uh, that while we have these norms and values, uh, they are not universally shared. And uh, I don't expect for Bill Barr or Jeff Sessions to come and incriminate themselves again. This is this is a this is part of the mass cleaning, restructuring, reinforcement. Talk about Amer American infrastructure. We need to start with our government and, and just reinstituting, looking at these things of all the ways that people uh, have gotten around and over and through and, and, and that it was just became uh, so corrupt and corruptible um, in ways that we normally couldn't imagine. So while Jay is pushing rightly for voting, voting rights and all of that, 
we're still dealing with an electorate that was willing to elect this in the first place. So we have fundamental issues here of education, of, um, of awareness, of, of ethical behavior, of what is right and wrong, and, and that we need to step back and look at those and do the best we can to shore up our, our, our great nation on an individual level, on a city level, on a state level. And we're uncovering this stuff. There's a lot more to come about this. Um, I, I'm not, I, I'm not uh, hopeful that we're, that we're going to get a lot of um, prosecutions out of it, but we may, if we can uncover the truth and at least know what happened and then do steps to take care of the damage and reverse it and stop it from happening again by really shoring up in every way possible, can, that's the best that we get. Our, can, can the we, Department of Justice wrap this uh, uh, chew gum and walk at the same time? I mean, we do have a January 6th inquiry, investigations from the FBI, all sorts of agencies. Um, can they can they take this one as well? Absolutely. We need special counsels for this. If White House, if, if Nixon had something, this is this makes Nixon look like a kindergartner in many ways. I mean, this is this was so so uh, pervasive throughout our entire system. I mean, you didn't you didn't have ten former Joint Chiefs of Staff or uh, saying we don't use the military to adjudicate um, uh, these uh, the elections. This this is so much more important than uh than that I, I, they're both of course important but comparing it to nixon I, I think is is not fair not reasonable this is this is just so much worse and uh and we're we're also 40 50 years down the road we should have learned by now and had much better systems in place but again we can thank the last administration for showing us where these huge Swiss cheese holes are and, and how to patch them up. Just Great to reverse um, uh, engineering. Great point. You know, it's, uh, we're about out of time, but I do want to go around the table and say, uh, what, what are your last thoughts? Uh, Jay, what do you think is going to happen in here in the next week or two? Well, it'll be more reaction. Certainly, we'll find out about, you know, whether the meeting with Putin was a nothing burger or what. Um, and that, that, again, is a matter of, um, you know, is it really priority if it's nothing burger? I'm not sure it is. But to me, voting rights is a priority. And the DOJ is a priority. Priority. If you ask me what might happen that's useful is the um, initiation of these investigations. That's what we need to save our democracy. You know, we are in a five alarm fire. We are in a tipping point of losing it. And uh, the, the way, only way out of this is to find out what happened and take action. And uh, I would leave you with, with one phrase that Winston used a minute ago, uh, and that is a special counsel. The DOG, DOJ should not be investigating itself. It has to have a third party special counsel of impeccable credentials and uh, you know, honesty and so forth uh, to take a look at this. And it should not be anything like the Mueller report, nothing like the Mueller investigation. All right, thank you. Stephanie, your last thoughts? And uh, you know, Winston brings up a great point, and that is, once again, we're finding out what the Trump administration was all about for its last four years, and it's it's paying off in spades, as they say. Uh, we're learning more and more, and gee, we're only you know eight months, seven months out of the uh, the you know the, the transfer of power. It's amazing. So many people knew that, including his uh, uh, Bolton was re reporting today on what what. Trump should be doing with, or excuse me, what Biden should be doing with Putin, that he was just incompetent and totally unprepared to be, or a, a, a capable of being president. But um, I wanted to say that I don't know the steps for it, if it's a special counsel, but why are we not removing immediately this, uh, this pr prohibition on indicting a president? So I can't understand, other countries are speaking to it, that there's no reason to have in this democracy a person that is immune. It's the same thing as having a king or an emperor, that they can do anything they want without any consequences. So we're really suffering from that. And it's got ramifications all the way down through the hierarchy. And uh, why we don't get on that, again, goes back to the Voting Rights Act, where we got to have that federal piece come in and get us in a situation of having voting work to get people in office who will carry out the duties and their obligations to the American people. Great. You know, the Southern District of Manhattan may have a, a point on that uh, in the next uh, six to 12 months. You never know. Uh, Winston, your last thoughts, please. 
Yeah, I mean, it may just be that the punishment comes in the in the form of the almighty dollar. I don't know. There's the court of public opinion that's very uh, substantial in this nation, and I I would be stunned. And it, it, let's see what comes out in some of these revelations. But honestly, um, we have we found that that half of our nation would accept the behavior of one person to do anything to literally kill someone in the middle of the street and have no repercussions for it. So I think that, um, you know, the punishment will come in other ways and it should come from the collaborators, uh, who, who, uh, carried out these things and, and were hoodwinked. And a lot of them, I like, uh, the QAnon shaman, he says he was a member of a cult and that's what his lawyer's defense is now. And honestly, uh, I kind of am inclined to agree with it. And as we all become wake up from this nightmare and bad dream, with uh, truth and reality, and it's presented in a gentle way that's allowed to sort of um, go into the mass consciousness, we'll come to different understandings. And the way to say yes in Lithuania is type, I think, T-A-I-P. I'm not sure how you pronounce it. So there you go, Jay. Brush up before our next session, and we'll get... <laughs> <laughs> and if the All aliens right, are coming, please help us. You know, in Star yes, Trek, when yes. they came, there was no more war, disease, or hunger within, like, Two generations when after first contact. So for the Trekkies out there, um, we're holding out hope. You know, I tried as hard as I could to keep the alien quotient, uh, you know, out of this. And you guys, you didn't you didn't disappoint me. You brought it in. You had to bring it in. All right. Well, you heard it here. You heard it here on Think Tech Hawaii, and that is the following: We don't know what we don't know as it pertains to UFOs or spying on congressmen. Thanks to Jay Fidel and his quotation. Jay, I'd like to thank you for joining us. Stephanie Dalton and Winston Welch, thank you one and all for joining us on What Now America. Join us next Wednesday, 11 o'clock. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host, and I have been invaded by aliens. Aloha. <laughs> <laughs>